Hey, how's it going guys? It's Rick. Last time when I talked about colors, I made a reference to sound and sound waves. So let's talk about that, shall we? You see, our ears can detect pressure changes, and we can hear from 0 decibels onward. Though past the 80 decibel threshold, it can be harmful. And past 90 decibels, it becomes dangerous. With any higher than that, we'll reach the irreversible damage threshold. So better watch out for that. This is due to little hairs within our cochlea organ. These hairs, simply called hair cells, act like a string of a guitar or a violin or any other string instrument for that matter. They are tuned to a precise frequency, having their own unique pitch. But what happens when the oscillating medium, which happens to be a liquid, reaches these hairs? Well, if the frequency the liquid is vibrating at is different than the one the little hairs have been tuned to, then nothing will happen. But if the frequency is the same, then a physical phenomenon takes place. Resonance. Imagine you having two guitars, and they are both tuned in the standard tuning. Well, if you strum a single string of guitar number one, you'll notice something happens on guitar number two. The same open string that you strummed on the first guitar will begin to vibrate slightly on the second. This is due to the strings being tuned at the same frequency, so the wave oscillations of air are capable of vibrating the strings on the second guitar. This is called resonance. And it's not exclusive to guitars. Tuning forks, for example, run exclusively on the principle of resonance to obtain a very pure tone. Well, the same effect happens with those small hairs on our ears, where each hair will resonate with its own frequency and send electrical impulses to the brain. Now, the stronger the air oscillations, the stronger the resonance vibration, which will be interpreted by our brains as louder sound. The sound can be so intense, in fact, that, as said before, it will permanently damage our ears. This actually happens naturally as one gets older, because the little hairs in our ears start losing their tune, losing their pitch, and so we start losing the ability to hear higher and higher frequencies. But as stated before, really loud sounds for a prolonged period of time will also damage our hearing. Fun fact, whenever we hear our own voices, they sound differently to us as they do to others. Why is that? Well, it has everything to do with vibration. You see, when we speak, we use our vocal cords and air to make them produce the sound of our voices. But seeing how the vocal cords make the rest of our throat vibrate, this vibration reaches our ears through our skin as a medium, not just the air. So this modifies the vibration picked up by our ears, whereas strangers only hear the oscillations of the air. A way to hear yourself more or less how others hear you is simply by grabbing your hands and putting them over your ears like so. And when you speak, that it will be the natural sound that the majority of people hear. Now that we've talked about how some noise can get loud enough to physically hurt us, let us tackle the difference between the frequency of a sound, which is measured in hertz, and the decibels. No matter how long something gets, the overall sound will be the same pitch and timbre. What will change is the decibels, or the amplitude of the wave. This means that the wave grows from crest to its baseline, but the shape of the wave will remain mostly intact. Now, what is the pitch and timbre, since I brought them up? Well, the pitch is the frequency of a given sound, that's to say, how many oscillations happen on a wave in any given time. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch. And timbre depends on the properties of whatever is making the noise. For example, let's say that we play the same note on a guitar and on a clarinet. They will have the same pitch, seeing how it's the same note. But it will sound slightly different because one vibrates a string and the other the metal brass. This is the timbre. The timbre is the reason why two singers can sing the same note and it still sounds unique to their voice type. It also has to do with harmonics, which we'll get to in just a small second. Okay, so all of this information has just been laying the groundwork for what comes next, which is music. You, me, your next door neighbor, the cat in the porch, we all know what music is, and we so comfortably label it as the universal language. 
But what's so universal about it? And why as we as humans agree when a song, regardless of our personal taste, is harmonical or not? Even when those hearing the song in question have no understanding of musical theory, no knowledge of what an interval is, or a scale, or any other musical phenomena. Well, if music is language, why don't we apply a similar approach like linguistics? For example, monogenesis. In music, the harmonic series is the closest we have of this. But what is the harmonic series? Well, let us imagine a string fixed at its ends. And this string is strummed. The physical way in which the string will vibrate will create several smaller waves. These waves are fractions of the original fundamental wave. So we have one half, we have one third, we have one fourth, and so on. So there's an infinite number of harmonics, as they're called. But what happens when we observe the notes of each? We can see where the musical theory came up with the idea of the pentatonic scale. And eventually, the Western cultures created their musical theory based on the pentatonic, making it even more complemented and eventually reaching the major scale, and from there on, any other Greek mode or church mode that we know. Okay, so let's do a quick experiment, seeing how I've got my keyboard all set up. Let's go ahead and focus, in this scenario, on the A major scale. And it goes a little bit like this. Okay, so the first day on this scale has a frequency of 110. Now, if we do a little experiment and continue summing up 110 plus 110 plus 110 plus 110, we will get our formerly known harmonics. So let's go ahead and do that, shall we? Okay. So now that we've added all of the values, we get 110, 220, 330, 440, 550, 660, 770, and 880. We could go on forever, but for the sake of this exercise, let's just go ahead and stop there. Okay, so as we already saw, the first A was 110. Now the second harmonic, which is 220, is also an A. However, it's an octave higher. Then we have 330. That would be an E. Four hundred and forty is again another tonic. Five hundred and fifty would be a C sharp. Then we have 660, which is an E. Then we have 770, which is a G. And finally, we have 880, which is an A. Okay, so what happens when we compare those harmonics with the A major scale? You will see that a lot of the notes repeat themselves. Now it's not exactly a perfect match, but you can see where the major scale got heavily influenced by the natural phenomena of harmonics. So this is where the major scale and all of its fundaments came from, like the triads or the previously mentioned modes. It all comes from the harmonic series, which is grounded in the physical phenomena of an oscillating object. Physics for the win again. Honestly, I'm doing a huge oversimplification and a disservice to the harmonic series, and only because if I got into depth, this video would be hours long. But if you're truly interested, please watch a lecture by Professor Bernstein of Harvard University. The link will be in the description below. Okay, so for the closing thoughts, no matter how complicated music might sound to us now and how difficult it might seem, 
the music theory of specific genres like metal or jazz or blues or whatever genre you find specifically difficult. It all comes from harmonics. It all comes from the physical reality and the limitations of it. So again, it's mind blowing how something so unique to the real world can influence something so metaphysical and and just unexplainable like music and art it's breathtaking how we can make complete creative works of art from physics and its oscillating systems so what do you guys think about this i'd love to hear your thoughts go ahead and leave it in the comments down below and uh i'll see you in the next one this was rick hopefully you had a good time see ya hey guys thank you for sticking to the end on this one the next upcoming video will be about architecture, so since I'm not well versed in it, I'm gonna need help from a friend. Hopefully you guys will tune in for that one as well. Also, if you have any doubts about previous videos or suggestions about future videos, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. This was Rick, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.